Welcome to our second in a series of interviews with the Reverend Dr. Morris Lovesey, former professor of Biblical Studies at Acadia Divinity College. Dr. Lovesey, at the end of the last interview, you were telling us about some of the experiences in South Africa. I wonder mm -hmm. if you could take us back to 1939 and explore a bit of the wartime experiences for us. Yes. Well, as you know, the um, Second World War opened um, in September, early September 1939. I had graduated from Birmingham with a BSc in Mining Engineering in uh, June of that 39 year. Um, I had been interviewed by the New Consolidated Goldfields Company in London. <laughs> I remember to this day the rather fearsome interview that, <laughs> that I had with the, the big boss, you know, uh, in his posh office just off the Strand. Uh, and uh, he told me that I had been assigned to their Robinson Deep Gold Mine in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I um, was awfully worried about my civic duty. Very proper young man, you know. <laughs> um, if the war came, what was my duty? Well, I'd stay, stay at home and take part in the war. Because one thing was fairly clear to all of us at that time, that Hitler had to be stopped, otherwise there was going to be trouble for everybody. Well, uh, he told me it's better, we'd rather have you going and digging gold out of the, the land in uh, South Southern Africa than, <laughs> than shooting Germans. <laughs> so he said, uh, in his opinion, uh, you make a better contribution to the war effort by g going on the job. Well, as I think I said earlier at some point, um, I always take advice, <laughs> and, uh, unless the advice given to me is stupid, and mind you, I'd be given a lot of stupid advice too. But anyway, this, this advice seemed uh, sensible, and I accepted that. So, on, I think it was September the, the 14th, the war opened on the 3rd, yeah, on the 14th I embarked on one of the Union Castle lines in Southampton, and uh, went all the way to Cape Town, zigzagging all the way because they were terribly scared of submarines at that, that point. And I, I, like, and with a lot of the other younger men, we were on submarine watch. And you know, it's surprising how many periscopes you can see in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we arrived at um, Johannesburg and then I went up on the Union uh, Railway, marvelous railway incidentally, all the way through the uh, Cape and uh, Orange Free State into the Transvaal and arrived at Johannesburg and uh, uh, tried, uh, after a while I was, took a taxi to the uh, uh, single quarters of the mine, full of dust, <laughs> and uh, there I uh, put my goods and within a day or so I went to the home of the sermons that I also explained earlier was uh, an address that had been given to me, the only address of anybody that I knew in Southern Africa. So there I was with my 20 pounds <laughs> and uh, prospects of a job. Well, I started on the mine and became a graduate learner. Oh, it's a long story. I won't bore you with that, but uh, I like the mines, mind, mind you. Uh, uh, the, the mines uh, I, I always enjoyed. I, I didn't leave the mines to, just to get out of them. Not far, far from it. I was a good miner, if I might say so. <laughs> and uh, my Section 3B south of the dike on the Robinson Deep, we got the top bonuses, always. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I got in with the Sermon family, of course and uh, got in with the Baptists and uh, became more and more convinced that if I went into the ministry at all, it would not be the Anglican Church because I had difficulties over infant baptism. <laughs> uh, and um, 
If I went in at all, it would be into the Baptist ministry. Now, the Baptist Union of South Africa is a very conservative group, uh, and uh, they uh, had a, an arrangement with Spurgeon's College uh, to take a, a student a year. They would sponsor a student a year. And so the uh, application was made on my behalf, and uh, after marriage and uh, all the ma machinery of making the application went through, we, s we set out for um, England on uh, near my birthday on uh, October of 44. We were a little late to start the year, but that's what happened. So again, we zigzagged all the way up to Freetown. And then we landed in uh, London, of course, in the midst of the fly bombs. So that was exciting. <laughs> Uh, we had all, well, we had half of the, the last half of the fly bombs and all the uh, rockets, the V2s. My wife entered a, a, a Bible college and I went to Spurgeon's and that's how we existed for the next four years in London. I wonder if I could interrupt. Mm, yeah, sure. We've talked about your wife, but we haven't found out who she is oh, or Dorothy how you May met her. Sermon. Yes, Dorothy May Sermon. Yes, I met her as soon as I landed in 39 and, um, and she at that time was doing nursing training in the big hospitals in Johannesburg and uh, eventually we decided we would get married in time and then I had a stint up in the Middle East in the army for two years most of the, that time was in Lebanon and we married when I came home but now in in, in um, in war service, uh, um, I should explain that when I went to, to the mines, um, a, a lot of the people wanted to go into the army immediately. And uh, the South Africans made the mining profession, um, oh, what's, the, what's the word, a bonded profession, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Anyway, we weren't allowed to go into the army. You see, we had to stay because it was important to the war effort to mine gold. Well, uh, to satisfy people's desires, I suppose, uh, they formed part-time Mines Engineers Brigade. That was a brigade of the South African Engineer Corps. And I joined this, of course, and we had all the regular uh, engineer training. Dear old engineers, you know what they used to say in the army, first in and last out, you're always in trouble. <laughs> so we did the whole training, square bashing and uh, all the necessary things of the last war. The history of our country is that we we're always fighting so brilliantly the last war, you know, not this one. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> we pushed the Bangalore torpedoes under the barbed wire, you know, blew it up. We did all that stuff. And uh, then came the uh, order for a unit of the MEB to go to the Middle East and take part in the defense of the Nile. This was 41. What they feared in 41 was that there would be a pincer movement onto the Nile. The Germans would go east across North Africa, perhaps land in Syria and come south join up and squeeze out the, the Suez Canal and destroy that artery, you see, for the Allied war effort. So um, they formed us up and I went. We, we were a, a, a company of about 200, I think. There was three of us from our mine. They took s numbers, certain small numbers from each mine across the whole of the ranch, you see. And... Um, we, uh, we landed uh, in Lebanon. Well, uh, let me earlier say that we, in going through the Straits of Madagascar, we, we passed over submarines galore. We had a great time in this sort of business. Uh, I, I was on, <laughs> the ship that we went up in was called the Eastern Prince. And I was on the six-inch gun crew at the end, to the back, you know. 
Now, this particular Eastern Prince had been bombed in Liverpool Harbour, and the plates had been cemented together with concrete. Well, what happens when you, when you fire the six-inch gun at the back with all these plates? Obviously, they're going to spring open, and the thing's going to go, go down. So this was exciting, to say the least. So uh, we managed to uh, get, get away with that, and uh, we landed in uh, Beirut after going through the Suez Canal. We were the first ship to go through uh, after the, the, the whole of the canal had been uh, cleared of bombed ships and that sort of thing. The Germans had bombed ships and blocked it. But we were the first to go through the unblocked canal. So we landed in, uh, in Syria. And we were attached to the Spears mission. Lieutenant General Spears was appointed by the High Command to be, to, to work out the economic possibilities of the Levant states. That's what he was on. So we had to go and take part in the defense of the, of that, of the Nile by driving uh, tunnels through uh, the spurs of the Lebanese mountains as they came out into the sea for a railway. They wanted a railway all up the way from Tripoli through to, uh, to Syria. So we were on that for a year. And we used to be, uh, well, we worked like mad. I've never worked so hard, so hard in my life. Never. You know, in these enormous railway tunnels, you know, dr drilling rounds with Lebanese labor, uh, with misfires from the previous round all the way around you, you know. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> that's, that's hectic. But anyway, we, uh, we did that. And, and at night time, of course, we... All in the day we were working on, 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 the, the, on the, the tunnels, but at, ni at night we were responsible for the defence. So we used to go out in three-ton trucks with the old Hopskiss machine gun. I mean, it's an antiquated affair. <laughs> we were on the back of this going along. And if you've been along that seacoast at night, with pitch black, I tell you, it's an eerie, scary business. Any time we expected the Germans might land a party, you know, and have a go at us. And well, we did that, and when that was over, um, I, was, I, I was sent all by myself uh, into the back of the Lebanese mountains there to see if I could find any more lignite deposits. They were wanting fuel, you see. And they had a great grandiose idea of uh, mining the lignite little pockets of it all over the place and uh, they would crush it and mix it with uh, asphalt which was available in the Syrian desert and that would form briquettes you see this was the plan and then the sulfur which would be extracted from this lignite <coughs> because this lignite was full of sulfur that would be used for making rubber so it was a grandiose plan so I took part in this grandiose <laughs> plan. I didn't find any lignite deposits <laughs> that were uh, uh, in the area, but that, that, that be as it may. Well, after that, we did a series of tunnels for water supply for the irrigation of the eastern Mediterranean between Tyre and Sidon. Yeah. The Litani River comes down south, breaks through the Lebanese mountains, and comes out onto the plain. Now, they, they dammed up the river at the bend and then carried the water down in sloots through tunnels that we, we had to prepare. And then it spread all over the coastal plain for irrigation. So, our tunnels grow, grow, grow potatoes now. <laughs> it still does, as far as I know. We, you left off a few minutes ago with mm. talking about your arrival in London. And I wonder if you could pick up the theme with Spurgeon's College then and take us on from there in your theological education. <laughs> All right. Well, I arrived, we arrived in London, and we were not allowed, of course, to tell my mother that we were coming. And so we arrived at uh, Liverpool, and uh, the dock had been damaged the day before. Some ship had bashed into the dock gates, apparently, and... So there was a delay. We had to wait outside. And we waited outside. And then I think we got in 
something like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or something horrible. And uh, then we had to try and find some accommodations to get to sleep because we were worn out. Uh, and we couldn't find any. So we took the train and that went straight to Euston via Watford, my home fortunately. So we got out there, got a taxi, and, uh, and arrived at my, my, my old home to the complete utter surprise, of course, of my mother and her father who were there. After that, of course, uh, we got settled in. I went to, to Spurgeon's and um, the, war, the, the bombs were still going. So I used to be sit on the tower of Spurgeon's College. <laughs> I used to do that with Carew Mitchell, who went on to Regent's Park College. But anyway, <laughs> the two of us were up there watching for the flashes of these uh, V1s, you know, as they were, yeah. went through. And um, we started the game. So we got really stuck in with the uh, preparing for the ministry at Spurgeon's College. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about mm. the professors and, and some of the, yeah. the, the time that you spent there. <laughs> I enjoyed Spurgeon's College very much. It was then in the, what I would call the gracious, open-eyed principalship of Percy W. Evans. He was a Welshman, of course, Evans, what else? <laughs> but he was, a, I think, a superman. I, I greatly worshipped him. Um, he had brought back the college, you know, into the Baptist Union after the downgrade controversy, yeah. you remember? Yeah. Uh, so that was the kind of man he was. He didn't want to split things up. He wanted to bind things together. Mm -hmm. um, and he believed in an educated ministry. So uh, he was responsible for making sure that uh, non-collegiate men who wanted to go into the ministry could get recognition, provided they took the CRK, the Certificate of Religious Knowledge of London University, and... Um, my wife actually took that later. But anyway, uh, he insisted that that should be taken by these men. And one of the courses, I think he, he required six papers. One of them should be Koine Greek. Mm -hmm. And he got that passed. So that there, that, that's the sort of man he was. Uh, he loved the ancient uh, uh, languages. And uh, uh, he, he was an ironic personality. He wasn't a fighter, you know. He didn't want to destroy everybody with insight. Uh, I, I, I wonder whether I dare say, maybe I'll risk it. One of the things he used to tell us, and I'll tell you this. He said, you, you know this uh, uh, fundamentalist modernist controversy? He said, well, I would put it like this, he said. Um, the fundamentalist, uh, he, he, he grits his teeth and he shakes his fit at the modernist and he says, traitor, traitor. And he said, the modernist, well, he pulls his GD gown around him <laughs> and he looks over his shoulder to the fundamentalist and he says you poor boob <laughs> and of course after the laughter has subsided he come round with the point crash line and gentlemen he said they are both wrong <laughs> that's the kind of man he was he had a great respect for Arthur Peach by the way Peach's commentary yes. oh boy <laughs> now, when you had finished at Spurgeon's College, what did you do then? Well, I felt I needed some more. I greatly <coughs> appreciated what I'd learnt at Spurgeon's. I mean, R.A. Ward, who was there, taught me Greek. He was uh, at my old school, actually, ten years before me. Uh, Fred Corley taught me Hebrew, bless his heart. And um, one of the most wonderful courses that I enjoyed was uh, Galloway, Philosophy of Religion. I knew Philosophy of Galloway's book from 
page one to the last page. I really, really sweated that up. And I thought it was wonderful. And uh, I could see, and I've always believed since, you've got to have a philosophical theology. Sorry, but that's how I feel. <laughs> um, my mind is full of quotations from Galloway. He taught at St. Andrews, by the way. Isn't it funny how institutions change? And <laughs> well, anyway, one of the quotes, I'll share this with you if I may. The enemies of true religion, wrote George Galloway, are fear, superstition, and ignorance. I didn't want to be ignorant. I, I knew I couldn't know it all, obviously, but what I did know, I wanted to be right. So there we are. <laughs> so after Spurgeon, you went on for some further training. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 Fred Courtney was very keen that I go to Mansfield. Okay. And um, he failed. He wanted me to go to St. Paul, by the way. Fred, Fred was an ex-BMS, Baptist Bishop of Society. Okay. And uh, he was very keen that I go to uh, St. Paul because a vacancy was occurring there. But that fell through for a variety of reasons. And, um, but he persuaded me to put in for the Neobard Scholarship at uh, Mansfield, which was a, a special scholarship for Baptists. So I went there. And there, of course, um, I had Nathaniel Micklem as uh, principal. And uh, I liked him too. I, I thought he was a fine man. And I've always enjoyed his writings. And he's always extremely kind to me. And there we had John Marsh, of course, and Eric Routley, who won quite a name for himself in uh, music, hymnology, and so on, organ playing, church music. And uh, while I was at Mansfield, of course, uh, Nat Mixham insisted that I go to Regent's Park to receive the inspiration from whoever was there. So I, I had Ernie Payne oh, yes. and um, enjoyed his... Uh, his lectures on the modern expansion of Christianity in the world. I remember that. And then I also had Bob Ch Child, which was indescribably boring, <laughs> <laughs> but very good. <laughs> um, he, he gave us a course on Calvin, Calvinism, and wrote a good book on Calvinism, by the way. Bob Child. He was uh, Wheeler Robinson's appointee, you know. Yes. Wheeler Robinson wanted Bob Child to succeed him as principal. Yeah. And so, nice, very nice man, but oh dear, bad as caddy at, at, at Regents. <laughs> now, after you had finished so this Oxford school, yeah. sorry, after you had finished there, you went into pastoral ministry for a time. Oh yes, so. oh indeed. Well, you see, all through this period, they, the South Africans had uh, got me into Spurgeon's and they expected me back and I wanted to go back. We wanted to go back. My wife was a South African. She wanted to go back. And so uh, when the time came, um, as I was nearing the end of, end of everything in 48, the, there was simply no vacancy. The, the trouble was I'd cooked my goose really by going to Mansfield. <laughs> which is supposed to be a very heretical place according to the very conservative uh, South Africans. And um, there were about three or four churches that might have had me that were open enough to have, have the likes of me, you know, who can't be guaranteed to say the right things. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um, there was no opening. So I had to find some somewhere, and um, an opening occurred for me at Kirby Muslow Free Church, which was a village, a dormitory village, five or six miles out of Leicester, right in the middle of England. And there, of course, we, I went in uh, 1950, uh, um, 1950, yes indeed, and was ordained there, and had six years as a pastor there. 1950 to 1956, during which time, of course, um, I enjoyed, I think, a, quite a good ministry, really. We, 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 we had fine people, wonderful 
set of deacons, a marvellous secretary, Marjorie Wilshire, and uh, men and women that I greatly respected and uh, fine people. <laughs> well, Dr. Lovesley, it seems like this might be a good place to make a break in All terms right. of the end of our second interview. We'd like to thank you very much for being with us mm -hmm. and we look forward to the next installment of our discussion. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm.